Alex Anderson. And I'm Ricky Timms. And welcome to Quilts with Alex and Ricky. Today we're going to talk a little bit about fabric. Do you love fabric, Alex? Oh no, <laughs> I love it. You know, it becomes an addiction for quilters, isn't it? Totally. I mean, you can't have enough. I, I can't have enough. I mean, my fabric stash is, uh, should I call it a stash or a collection? I kind of get confused. I've heard people say, if you call it a collection, you don't have to use it because a stamp collector wouldn't use their stamps. Or uh, a coin collector wouldn't use, use their, their coins. That's right. So there's your permission right there, folks. But nonetheless, we all have more fabric than we're going to use in our lifetime, right? That's okay, isn't it? I Well, it is okay. And as a matter of fact, I love some of the stories that I've heard from students that have told me about their fabric stashes. One particular lady said, uh, my husband came down into my work studio and he didn't do that very often and I was really kind of happy he was watching me do what I do. And then lo and behold, he looked around and he said, Darlene, you must have at least $200 <laughs> worth of fabric in this room. You know what like, my husband calls yeah, that? Right. He calls those people Volt Dolts. <laughs> Volt Dolts, that's <laughs> so, good. I well, I got an email from a woman, excuse me for cutting in, but this was so great. She wrote me, and she was a brand new quilter, and she felt the transformation come over her. You know what I'm talking about. And she was kind of concerned, to tell you the truth, because she was totally obsessed with this new sport that she had developed. And she wanted to know if this feeling was normal. And I wrote back, welcome to the club. Absolutely, it is normal. This is just, you might as well get used to it because that's the way it's going to be for a long time. It's a good feeling. Now, one one final story about the fabric stash. I had a, another student, and she really had gone overboard, and she had more fabric. I mean, it was just piled to the ceilings and on shelves and everywhere. And her husband came in, and he said, "Now, honey, this has gotten out of hand. You cannot have this much fabric. It's just gotten out of hand." Oh, she said. Um, you don't understand. I've taken a new position on the board, and this is uh, this is the guild's fabric. I'm the <laughs> keeper of the guild's fabric. So, you can use that one. <laughs> yeah, really. The, the bottom pieces. line is, is that we love fabric and love to shop for fabric, and we're going to keep shopping for fabric. And today we're going to talk a little bit about using those fabrics and how to use them in your quilts to make it more successful. Well, you know, Ricky, I teach all over the place, actually more locally now than nationally, but the number one problem that people have is they go, my quilts are flat. They don't have the sparkle. And I'll tell you what, the number one key to sparkling quilts is, ta-da, value. Value alone can make or break the quilt. Let's look at this example I have here, this medium, this light, and I think I would call this a medium light. Sure. And the deal is, Ricky, you go to the quilt store, where are you going to spend your money? On the pretty fabrics, on right. the jewel tones, the really rich, beautiful fabrics. Right. Yeah. And the bottom line is, is your quilt can't be made up of all this sort of fabric because everybody can't be leaders. You have to have some followers. And the followers would be the light and the dark. So it's very important that you incorporate all of them. But those are so hard to buy. I know. Because they're not so dazzling. Well, here's the deal. They're not available. I work with a fabric company, and when we design a line of fabric, we want every piece to sell. I mean, that's the bottom line, right? Right. Yes. And so, honestly, if you're not going to spend your money on the light and you're not going to spend your money on the dark, we tend to make more mediums out there. So when you go to your quilt shop, it's important that you look at the lights and you look at the darks and you gather that for your collection. It will make you have a healthy collection of fabric. Yeah, I would even suggest go buy the beautiful fabrics that you are drawn to but before you leave, okay, I'm just going to get a half yard of one light that looks like it'll work, yes. a half yard of one dark, and you'll have it in your collection yes. or your stash. And you will use it over and over and over. And here we have an example of a block that's all light. It's boring. It's all just yeah. light value, Ugh. absolutely. You know, and here it's light, medium, dark. What a difference. Yeah, it's starting to sparkle. That's right, that's right. And the next important consideration for smashing fabulous, wonderful quilts are color families. <music> 